In this video, we'll review how to solve quadratic equations by completing the square. We can solve any quadratic equation that is in vertex form, that is f of x equals a quantity x minus h squared plus k, by substituting y equal to 0 and solving for x. So let's take a look at our example here. Here we have f of x equals the quantity x minus 5 squared minus 48. To solve this problem, we'll begin by setting f of x equal to 0. We'll then move the 48 to the other side by adding 48 to both sides. This isolates the quantity x minus 5 squared. Now to undo the square, we'll use the inverse of squaring. The opposite of squaring would be square rooting, so we'll take the square root of both sides. However, when you square root a square, you get two answers. We'll get x minus 5 equals plus or minus root 48. That's because positive root 48 times positive root 48 is 48, but also a negative root 48 times a negative root 48 would also be 48. So remember, when you square root a square, you go plus or minus. The square and the square root cancel, and we're left with x minus 5 equals plus or minus root 48. Now to get the x by itself and isolate the variable, we'll now add 5 to both sides. If we add 5 to both sides, we get x equals 5 plus or minus root 48. Now 48 is not a perfect square. However, I want to try simplifying it before we approximate. I know that 48 can be made by using a factor tree, and it would be 16 times 3. The square root of 16 is 4, so the root 48 will become 4 root 3. Here I get x equals 5, and then plus or minus now 4 root 3. These aren't like terms, so I can't combine them. Instead, at this point, I'm going to use my calculator, and I'm going to approximate my values. I'll take it and I'll type it in. 5 plus 4 root 3, and then I'll do 5 minus 4 root 3. The plus minus just means I'm going to do two operations. I'll find one answer by adding these two numbers, and I'll find the other solution by subtracting the numbers. 5 plus root 3, 4 root 3, and 5 minus 4 root 3 will yield these values. 5 minus 4 root 3 is about negative 1.93, and 5 plus 4 root 3 is about 11.93. Now the problem did say find the x-intercepts. This would be the answer if it just said solve for x. If I want to find the x-intercepts, I'll now put these in coordinate form. Now I could put the 5 plus 4 root 3 comma 0, but that's a little awkward and I wouldn't want to have to do that on a graph. So instead, I'm going to use the negative 1.93 comma 0 and the 11.93 comma 0. And I'll say those are the x-intercepts. I'm going to use those because those are easier to find on a graph. Now let's take a look at one more example. In this problem, the equation is in standard form and I'm going to have to rewrite it in vertex form by completing the square. To begin, like the last problem, I'm going to set f of x equal to 0. Now if it's negative 2x squared, that means I'm going to have to build negative 2 groups when I go ahead and complete the square. So I'm going to factor out that negative 2 from the x squared and the x terms. So if I take negative 2x squared and divide by negative 2, I get a 1x squared. The 16x divided by negative 2 would be negative 8x. And then to finish the quantity here, half of negative 8 is negative 4, so I'm going to add negative 4 squared. Please make sure you put that in parentheses. Now we had 4 at the end, but if I have negative 2 groups of the negative 4 squared, which means I have negative 2 groups of 16, to balance the equation, I also have to add 2 groups of 16. To finish putting this into vertex form, I'm going to go ahead and simplify this. The negative 2 quantity x squared minus 8x plus negative 4 squared can be rewritten as negative 2 quantity x minus 4 squared. And then the 2 times 16 is 32. To finish getting the vertex form, we'll add the 4 and 32, and that's 36. This would be the vertex form of the equation. Now to solve it, I'm going to move the 36. I'll subtract 36 from both sides, and I get negative 36 equals the negative 2 quantity x minus 4 squared. We'll then divide both sides by negative 2 to get the uh, quantity x minus 4 squared isolated, and we get 18 equals the quantity x minus 4 squared. Now that the quantity is isolated, we'll undo the squaring by square rooting. If we square root both sides, we get that the plus or minus root 18 equals x minus 4. Again, remember, when you square root a square, two answers, plus or minus. We'll move the 4 next to get x by itself and isolate the variable. If we add 4 to both sides, we get x equals 4 plus or minus root 18. Now again, 18 is not a perfect square. So I do a factor tree, I know that 18 is 9 times 2. The square root of 9 is 3, so root 18 becomes 3 root 2. I'll then use my calculator and approximate these values. 
I'll say that 4 minus 3 root 2 is about negative 0.24, and 4 plus 3 root 2 is about 8.24. If the problem said solve for x, these would be the solutions. However, the directions say we're going to find the x-intercepts, so we'll write our answers in coordinate form. Again, I could use 4 minus 3 root 2, comma 0, or I can use the approximation, negative 0 0.24, comma 0. And I can do the same thing for the 4 plus 3 root 2. I can also say that's just 8.24, comma 0. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope, hope it helped you understand this.